Hey, y'all, and thank y'all for tuning in. Now, if this is your first time, welcome. Now, if you've been here before, welcome back. Y'all, I am truly, truly excited. Can't you tell by the sound in my voice? Y'all, that is because we are going over the fried chicken lover's ultimate fried chicken sandwich recipe, y'all. And on this channel, the food is always the star. And I must say thank you all. As we approach 10,000 family members, I feel appreciated. And I want to show you all appreciation daily, y'all. Because you have been showing me appreciation daily. Step for step, view for view, like for like, and comment for comment. I really appreciate every effort, y'all. Now, first things first, we're going to lay out this bacon. Get this bacon laid out. Then we got our chicken. Now, what we need to do is make sure we check for bones, rinse the chicken off thoroughly, check for bones, check for extra cartilage or anything that we don't need, and then we're going to slice this chicken in half. Essentially, turn it into cutlets so that way we can extend the portions of chicken that we have. Because when we do bread it up, it's going to flatten out a little bit, y'all. So we're starting off with a teaspoon of chicken base, y'all. And we're going to take this chicken base and we are going to rub it in this chicken thoroughly as the foundation of flavor for our chicken fried chicken sandwiches, y'all. That's what it's all about. And then we're going to go ahead and incorporate the different flavor agents we want to put in, y'all. Once we get the chicken rubbed down real good and put that secret agent, that pickle juice in there. Mm, mm, mm. We can drop our eggs in there. Now, some people like to go ahead and whisk their eggs up first. That's fine. I just chose not to do it this time because I do do that as well. Now, we have our panko breadcrumbs and flour, and we add whatever seasoning agents we want to add in there. Whatever y'all love is what you're going to add, y'all. But that panko and that flour together is a, ooh, it's a great combo. Did you know? You can substitute out cornstarch for flour and then it becomes gluten free as long as you don't use panko breadcrumbs too as well, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we are going to actually par fry this chicken, y'all. Yes, we want the color, but we're going to finish it in the oven for about five minutes because the chicken is cooked more than halfway. What we are doing by finishing it in the oven is that we are getting rid of any excess grease oil that we don't need y'all but we got our bacon we got that grease off the bacon sitting there now we got the bacon and the napkin and paper towel which you don't see but we working on our sauce now we have mayo mustard pickle juice and whatever seasoning flavor agents you like y'all i have some kinder's wood fire garlic seasoning some tony saturies in there too as well Yes, I do. Now we have our griddle working. I'm going to butter that down. We're going to drop our bread. I choose Texas toast. You might want a bun. You might want sourdough. Whatever bread of your choice that you want, go for it, y'all. Go for it. Now look at the chicken. That looks pretty good. We have all the excess grease drained off of that too by oven finishing it. And it also allowed me the space I needed to work on these sandwiches. These smamich smamich sandwiches. They look so good, y'all. To package to go. Now, when you got family and friends, they used to make you food to go when you came to visit them. Y'all still do that. Still carry on that tradition if you want to, y'all. But when you hold a knife, make sure you hold it the right way. Put your index finger on the side of it, your thumb, have it tucked, and use that thumb as a guide, as a guide across the blade so you don't cut yourself. You don't want to have your index finger on the top of the knife because that is a surefire way to cut yourself. All right, have your thumbs tucked and be careful when you use that object called a knife, y'all. And make sure you have some fun when you're in the kitchen. Whatever you love to do, Make sure you have fun doing it. Y'all, I have fun in the kitchen. This is what I do for a living. So it's not that I am a, you know, content creator. I am actually a chef. I've been in the industry for over 20 something years, y'all, as we saute up these portobello mushrooms in this pan. And if you're a vegan, you can add some onions in here too. And that can be your sandwich smamage right there. But as I was saying, y'all, I've, I've done everything. I've washed dishes. I've been a busser. I've waited tables. Uh, I've worked as a private chef. I worked as a cook. I had to climb the ranks, y'all. I've been in the industry for 20 plus years. 
So I love to share what I do. So this is not just a money grab. This is truly a passion. So I ain't going nowhere, y'all. I just want to let you know. So go on and subscribe to the family. I ain't going to leave you hanging and I ain't going to waste your time as we saute up these portobello mushrooms and these onions in this cast iron skillet, y'all. You see how much I paid for the mushrooms? I saved $1.62. Now we're going to add this cheddar cheese for us protein lovers who love meat proteins. Yes, we are on that chicken sandwich. I wanted it, and I wanted some bacon on it, too, to go with those portobello mushrooms and saute onions on that Texas toast. Y'all, with that sandwich spread we made, woo-wee, that look good now. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. Throw them pickles on there, ooh, chips. If it's game day, that's the perfect way to go at home. You fix something like this, you can't miss. And if you feel like it's something we miss, let us know so we can add it to the playlist, y'all. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see y'all on the next side. We trying to be in your browser and in your up next section, y'all.